My name is Jose Lopez, and today I'll be presenting our work, A Speaker Recognition Approach to Anomaly Detection. I'll begin with a bit of background on DKs before going into the methodology used in our work and discussing the results, conclusions, and future work. The work I'm presenting is a result of our participation in the 2020 DKs Challenge. It is the sixth edition of the IEEE Audio and Acoustic Signal Processing Challenge on Detection and Classification of Acoustic Scenes and Events. Participants are able to submit solutions to any of six tasks. The task that we participated in is task two, which is identifying unknown anomalous machine sounds using normal data. It is the only a supervised task. The data are provided for six machine types and are compiled from two existing data sets. Machines are deliberately damaged to produce anomalies. And submitted models are ranked using AUC and partial AUC metrics. The six machine types are fan, pump, slider, valve, toy car, and toy conveyor. Each type has between six and seven instances for a total of 41. And there are between 5,100 and 7,000 training files for each machine type. Each sound file has a 10 second recording that has been downsampled at 16K and has a single channel. Additionally, each recording has been corrupted with environmental noise. Only noisy recordings are provided. The DK's organizers, they provide a baseline system to enable participants to have a model to compare against. In this case, it is a fully connected autoencoder with layers that include 128 hidden units and an encoder output that has eight hidden units. The feature used is a log mail spectrogram that has 128 mail frequency bins and 64 time frames, which are collected into five before and after frames. When the batch size is 512, the input size is 512 by 640. And the mean squared reconstruction error serves as both the loss function and the anomaly score. On the top right, we see a table that shows the reported baseline performance. A key difference between the baseline system and our approach is that we use the machine ID information to turn an unsupervised problem into a supervised problem. Like the baseline system, we use the MEL spectrograms as a feature. However, we do not apply the logarithm. We simply scale the frequency axis using the HTK formula. For FAN, we do not use a MEL spectrogram. We use a short time Fourier transform. For the MEL spectrogram, we use 128 MEL frequency bins, except for pump, for which we use 256. The FFT window size used is 1024, and the hop length we use is 80 for half of the machines and 500, 512 for the other half. We used the PyTorch package and an audio to generate the spectrograms on the fly. And here we have a link in case you are interested in learning more about this PyTorch package. On the top right, top right we see a, a table that has a high level view of our network architectures. We see there are three key ingredients. There is a two dimensional convolutional encoder that has progressively smaller filter sizes. And then we also use an X factor component, which comes from the, the speaker recognition literature. The X factor is composed of time delayed neural network layers and a stats pooling layer. We also use uh, the additive margin softmax, softmax technique, which is also frequently seen in the speaker recognition literature. It is known to minimize the intraclass distance. If you're interested in learning more of, about these techniques, please take a look at our paper. We have some references there. And then to reiterate, in our approach, we use a machine ID to turn an unsupervised problem into a supervised problem into a classification problem. Here we see a detailed view of our architecture. On the right, we see a PyTorch printout that shows that our input layer is a, spec is a spectrogram layer, which feeds into an encoder and then an X-vector part. We then cap it off with an additive margin softmax layer. The combined model is very is not very large it only has 1.2 million trainable parameters during training we randomly sample about a 1.4 second sound clip 
to form batches of either 64 or 128. We train for between 100 and 200 epochs, and we apply training set normalization during training. The loss function we use is, is cross entropy, and we use the Atomax optimizer with the default learning rate. We also use L1 reg regularization on the encoder weights to prevent overfitting. For the toy conveyor, we use a slightly different training strategy. We use a much smaller batch size of seven, and we split a training file into seven parts. Each batch contains information from only one machine ID. With probability one half, we corrupt one of these parts using mix-up augmentation. And so our system has an additional class, which we call other class, where we lump all these synthetic anomalies in, into. For scoring, we generally have two, two approaches. For most machines, we use one minus the softmax probability. In the case of toy conveyor, we also add in the other probability, which directly measures the probability of an anomaly. We also use the cosine distance, which at test time computes the cosine distance between the test embedding and the average embedding which was recorded during training. Using our approach, our team rank was seven in the challenge. However, we think that this was skewed by a poor showing on the toy machines and the toy conveyor in particular. If we only look at the Mimi team ranks, our, our ranking is much better. One of the key things that we learned during this challenge is that using a metadata to turn an unsupervised problem into a supervised problem is a valid approach. We saw many of the top teams use a machine ID classifier in their solution. We do not think that this is limiting because in the case you have a single machine, it may still be possible to apply the method using synthetic anomalies. Our intuition is that this approach works when the machine sounds are sufficiently similar to make the learning test challenging. In the case of toy conveyor, this was not the case. The different machine sounds were easily differentiated even though they were part of the same machine type. For future work, obviously we would like to improve our existing approach. We feel that we can tune our encoder better or maybe even substitute it using some popular model architecture like ResNet. We think in, that an attention mechanism might help or ensemble methods. We might have been one of the only teams that did not include an ensemble in their submission. We would like to better understand when our approach works better than uh, mainstream approaches like autoencoders, and also identify useful augmentation strategies. We saw that many teams had very interesting strategies for data augmenta um, augmentation, and we would like to learn from them. And that's all I have for today. Are there any questions?